Um, I am Shannon Elliott, and I am the manager of our NSYNC network here at PMD Alliance, excuse me. <clears throat> and that is our support group leader network. And uh, we provide education and training and resources. We do online programs such as this. We do in-person workshops. We were just in Sacramento last week. We'll be in Georgetown, Texas next week. Um, so uh, just happy to be with you all. Glad you've joined us. I've got two of my colleagues. Um, with us today. Uh, Rachel, you want to say hi? Sure. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. I am Rachel Steinberg. I am the Community Network Manager here at PMD Alliance. I'm an adult child of somebody who had atypical Parkinsonism, and I help run our support groups that we offer through Zoom uh, through PMD Alliance. And uh, I'm happy to be teaming up with Shannon in the InSync land and uh, happy to see all of you today. So I'm in Phoenix and uh, let's see, Kelly is our other compadre here. <laughs> Hello, thank you, Rachel. Uh, I'm Kelly Merkel. I am the online programs manager at PMD Alliance and I provide tech support on uh, the support group leader uh, calls like we're on today. So if there's any issue with connecting audio, video, um, or any other random things that you never know come up in the tech world, uh, let me know. And otherwise I plan uh, our weekly educational programs, uh, live streams that are online throughout the week. And I'm happy to be here on a Friday with all of you. So I'll be good. Yay. All right. Thanks, Kelly and Rachel. Um, and I see that some of you have already done this, but if you haven't, what I'd love you to do is to rename yourself. Um, so if you can hover your mouse over your own image, go to the three dots, the ellipsis, click on that and a menu will pop up. You're gonna click on rename. And what I would love you to do is just let us know what you'd like to be called, your first name, and then the city in which you live. I'm in Santa Fe, so get that into my name there. Excellent. So we can uh, all see if we have neighbors um, closer than we, than we realized uh, joining today. Um, so if this is your first time, um, our round tables, we like to do once a month. Um, and this is our chance to have a a support group for us as support group leaders. Um, so there's not a lot of uh, content to be delivered um, from our end to you. It's really more of an open forum and a chance for you to uh, speak to one another and in smaller groups, we'll do breakout groups and I'll give you a prompt, um, which you can discuss if that feels good to you or if there are other things that are top of mind, um, things you'd like to ask your, your fellow leaders. This is a chance for you to, to really have some good conversation and uh, connect with one another. We'll come back after the breakouts, uh, which will be a nice, uh, good lengthy breakout session, hopefully about 50 minutes, and then we'll come back and have um, some time to share back to the whole group. So if there is any um, really great insights that, that you came up with or um, topics that you think everyone should, should hear and know about, uh, we'll, we'll do that at the end. Um, so I think with that, I am going to start sharing my uh, screen with you. See if I can get this to work. It's always very exciting. Um, do this and then one more. All right. So does that look pretty good? Okay. I'm getting some thumbs up. Awesome. <clears throat> so I'm going to make this a little smaller so I can. Oops. <laughs> Let's try that again. I have some extra steps. Canva, <clears throat> the program that I'm using for my slideshow, had some updates uh, with my recent. Um, computer updates. And so it's, uh, it feels a little bit different than it used to. <laughs> so um, I'm learning that as we as we speak. Uh, so um, I think everybody can see my screen or my slides. <clears throat> so I'd like to start off 
our um, our session today with what I call a, a chat storm. So if you haven't opened your chat box on the right side of your screen, go ahead and do that. And this is um, the topic that I'd like you to think about and let us know in the chat what you think. Um, here we are in August, and I always uh, I, um, default, I, I think, of the school year. So I feel like August, September is the beginning of the year. I don't know if anyone else has, has that feeling. Um, so for me, it's like, okay, we're about to embark on a, on a new journey. This is the beginning of a, of a new year. So um, what's a new goal that you have for your group this coming year? And uh, let us know in the chat what you think. Um, it's a good way for all of you to engage um, with, with our meeting and with each other as we uh, start our roundtable today. So I'm not seeing, let me see, I need, need to open my chat bubble. There we go. Okay. Trying so, to grow the group. Growing the group. Yep. Find new members. I think that's probably for everybody. Yeah. Bringing more people back from, you know, pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So Gathering. more live in-person gatherings, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, social time, that's great. Okay, so optimizing medication protocols. So maybe inviting some, some guest speakers, uh, having some, like a movement disorder specialist come and talk potentially. I like um, this one, trying to foster more connections between the newbies and the, the returning people. Yeah, great making sure that the new folks feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might think of pairing people up, um, creating buddy system kind of thing. Um, Jen wants to get a group started in Newport Beach. Awesome. We need more groups. Yes. We've lost so many during COVID, during the pandemic. Um, the estimation is that we lost about 30% of our support groups across the country. So we need to... Uh, get those numbers back up, get people involved, make sure they're, they, they feel like they have a community and they're not alone. Education is coming up, promoting uh, WPC, the World Parkinson Congress in Barcelona next year. I wonder how many of you are planning to go. That would be a very big trip. Um, Changing facilitators and, okay. and sort of giving the wisdom to new facilitators. That's great, Anna Maria, thank you. Yeah. And then Roger, he's actually asking us a question. <laughs> what is your greatest challenge since we last met? So um, since our last round table could be, so that maybe is something you can discuss in your breakout sessions. Um, wonderful. Okay, everybody. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, maybe this is just a chance to think about uh, what you might um, bring in, what, a new fresh idea for your group this coming year. All right, this uh, next slide is um, what we call our collaboration agreement. So this is what we decide to um, do together, um, uh, working together in a group here. So we want to um, all agree to um, be responsible with our, our uh, audio. So um, muting your mic, it, it seems like a lot of you are on top of that. So just to prevent um, the background noise, um, but we want you to unmute and share and um, wh whenever you'd like. Uh, listening deeply is also something we ask you to do. Um, just taking the time, have an open mind and really listen to each other. And then next we have yes and, which uh, is a phrase that comes from the improv world. So it's building on other people's ideas. So you listen deeply to what they have to say, say yes, you validate um, how they feel. And then you say, and I have this other idea as well. So building on top of others' ideas. Uh, moving with intention. So when you're in your breakout sessions, just to make sure that you um, are aware of the sharing time, making sure everybody has a chance to talk. And then uh, please um, be patient with us and with technology and uh, with my new um, slideshow situation, trying to make sure everything looks good. So um, we appreciate that, um, that you're, you're patient with us. All right. Okay, so um, is Gail Scholl here by chance? I'm not sure if I'll be able to see her. She's a support group leader in our network, and she uh, had written me an email um, wanting to discuss this particular topic. Um, so this came out of 
for the fundamentals training that we offered in June. Um, and so uh, we talked about how some groups like to have um, similar to what a comment card would be, where it might be an anonymous way, anonymous or you could put your name on it, a way to uh, offer suggestions, group members to, to the leaders so that you can start to really understand the needs and wishes of the, of the group members themselves. Um, and so Gail was asking, uh, she would love to know from other support group leaders out there, what kinds of questions they might ask or what prompts do they give their support group members so that they can uh, receive uh, input. And so um, I have these two bullets here and these are just suggestions as far as um, prompts for your breakout sessions today. So how do you incorporate the ideas of your members into your support group meeting calendar? And I just ask you here to brainstorm with your fellow leaders today, uh, various prompts and questions to get your members involved in guiding meeting content, just to make sure that it's, um, you know, it's inclusive and people feel like they have, um, you know, a say and they're, and they're just really involved that way. So I have um, a slide here that, uh, you know, Gail, in, in this uh, email she sent, these were the five things she suggested. And so I just wanted to share them with you as a jumping off point before you go into your breakout rooms. So she says, you know, what questions would you like us to tackle together? What do you want to get from the support group? And then just an open-ended, you know, topics for our group to discuss, dot, dot, dot. What would you like that to be? And what do you want to get from this group from meeting together? What speakers would you like to come talk to us? So those are some examples of, of prompts and questions that you could potentially put onto a comment card or um, <clears throat> even ask open forum, you know, during a meeting. So I need to, uh, I'm going to copy these questions, these prompts for you, and put them in the chat. I and just so started to do that, Shannon. If you could just oh. turn the screen back to those questions, I'll finish it up and I'll put it in the chat right now. Okay. Thank um, you. I will do this. So, and then I will go to the next okay. slide for you. Thanks, Rach, for the, mm -hmm. the help with that. Um, <clears throat> And so, so Kelly, she is our tech whiz and she's going to be putting you all into your, into your groups. And so we typically like to do about six to seven folks. Um, it's usually, you know, good amount for, for sharing. Uh, thanks for that, Rachel. And uh, yeah, so are there any questions? I'm going to stop my screen share. It looks like Kelly's ready. So I'm just gonna, cause I can't see you all and it's hard um, to know. There we are. Okay, so are there any questions? Go ahead and unmute yourself um, before we head off into the ether, into our, <laughs> into our breakout rooms. Um, looks like John has a question. Hi, John. Uh, I'm uh, on, on a uh, group uh, chat kind of uh, format. Uh, yeah, I, I've made some significant progress on using uh, new technologies uh, to collect data, and it's helped me to uh, readjust the timing of some medications, my nighttime medications, which are clonopin and one that starts with a Q, I didn't came to tell you. Okay. But I've uh, rearranged those and improved my, uh, the quality of my sleep. Uh, and it, it just opened up the possibility of uh, using these new, uh, measurement devices, smartphones, and mm -hmm. in my case, I have a, a mattress uh, installed sensor and I get good sleep data. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's just wow. not enough happening in this area. 
Okay. Well, I wonder if you could, um, thank you for that. And um, your, your microphone took a second to <laughs> kind of register. So we, I think we missed a little bit of the beginning of what you were saying, but we, we, we caught, I think the, the gist. So um, maybe that's something you can discuss in your breakout session and, um, and, and see what you can learn and share, you know, about what you've, you've discovered in this area. Um, great. Thank you. Anyone else have a question before we head to our, our breakouts? Okay. All right. So, um, what time is it right now? Um, I think we will, it's about 20 after. So I think we can go till, um, five after. So depending on what time zone you're in, um, and then we'll have 25 minutes to share back if that makes sense, okay? So I will let you know halfway through that we are halfway through and then I'll give you a five minute warning and then you'll be brought back in to the main room automatically. All right, sound good? Can I see thumbs up? Everyone okay? Yes, I see mostly thumbs up. <laughs> All right, Kelly, hit the magic button and we will see you on the other side, everybody. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Did you have a, a good Oof. session with your, yeah, fellow leaders there? Nice discussions. Good. I see some thumbs up. Two awesome. thumbs up from Roger. Ah. Very enthusiastic. <laughs> Very nice. Good. Well, it looks like everybody is back. Um, so we have a good amount of time here to go through each group and just um, inquire and see, see what you all talked about, see what came up for you and, um, and share with the whole group here. So uh, why don't we go ahead and start with the first breakout room, which included Dottie, Gail, Karen, Carl, Mary, Val, and Vic. Would anyone like to volunteer to be the spokesperson for that group? all volunteer at once. <laughs> I was just about to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's brave? Uh, hang on. Wanna... I'd be happy. We had a very lively group. One of the things that we did was to share with each other how our groups currently operate and some of the frustrations we were uh, experiencing. Uh, there, uh, uh, one of the people on the group wants to form a group. So she was kind of interested in so, sort of how we operate. We also talked about the uh, transition from um, uh, Zoom meetings to, to uh, um, you know, in-person meetings. Mm -hmm. And we also talk, spent some time talking about uh, uh, programs uh, and also uh, tools, tips and tricks for people with Parkinson's. But it was very interesting hearing how different groups operate in other parts of the country. And one of the things that we talked about, which was interesting to me, is, is in kind of um, inputting information about people who just participate in the group and how to maintain that information in a secure way, in, a, in an easily manageable way, because there are a couple of us at Voice particularly that we need to be caring people and we wanna be able to reach out to people when necessary. Not everybody has email. Uh, so having some information so we can reach out to people with an occasional phone call or mm -hmm. in some way is very important. And Vic, and Vic, if you're still on there, if you could uh, uh, send me some information about MailChimp, that's something we're looking into to maintain our information. We're, we're just beginning to look into that. But we had a very nice group. Anybody else from our group want to wanna tune in? Something else that I missed? Looks like Vic has unmuted himself. Would you like to? Um, yeah, I'm checking into it. I don't know if anybody, maybe some tech guru would would uh, be able to, it's a little bit more familiar, familiar with MailChimp. I've reached out to a couple of my contacts. Um, okay. Heard anything? Maybe somebody in the larger group could answer. Nancy. There, um, I know that there is a free, a free portion of MailChimp um, that is fairly user-friendly. Nancy, do you have? Well, and Lauren ought to jump on too, because she mm -hmm. and Lauren and I have had this discussion. Um, we were ready to transition to MailChimp just just before the pandemic started. 
And then we got a, a group that came on with this and that leader said, oh no, I've heard about, um, and he gave another one. So we've literally been mushing around with this for two and a half years. I would love for this to be a topic hmm. within the support groups. I mean, we are now seven, soon to be maybe eight or nine support groups strong. And uh, that means a, a lot of data. Um, I, I, and, and that's my concern as well. Right now, the things for the groups that I facilitate are all on my Apple computer. Okay. And I send everything out through Gmail, mm. um, having learned the hard way that if you have a local carrier uh, and you're out of the country and you're in charge of sending flyers, <laughs> that they won't go. Mm. <laughs> and then you spend two and a half days of your vacation taking the entire database and building it into Gmail so you can get the flyers out in time for the speakers that are going to show up at meetings you're not going to be at. Lots of fun. So I'm using Gmail now and, I, I, and I'm on an Apple, but my plan is I think what we're going to be doing is transitioning to MailChimp. And again, Lauren actually, I think has more experience. And I've just talked to a couple other organizations that are PD related and they all seem to be kind of floating towards MailChimp, but I know there are other options out there. Mm, thanks for that. Uh, Lauren, do you want to speak on that as well? Um, yeah, the nice thing about MailChimp is they do have a free version. Mm -hmm. um, right now I'm actually using Flowdesk, um, which I have to pay for, but I'm actually thinking I'm going back to MailChimp because it's free. Mm -hmm. um, it can be, it's not hard to use. You just have to know how to use it. I learned a lot of it on YouTube. So you can, you know, just go on YouTube and do like MailChimp tutorial and they'll work you through a lot of that. Um, it's not super hard. And then once you get your first one set up, I kind of have a template. And then for every month after that, it's pretty much just drag and drop and change the text mm -hmm. and change the announcements, change the pictures. It's just getting the main ones set up. But, but it's mm -hmm. definitely a good thing for newsletters and a good way to get your information out to big groups. That's a great idea about the YouTube video tutorial that you know will always be available to you. Myra's raising her hand and I know that she has figured out MailChimp. Um, and so I don't know if Myra can figure out MailChimp, I think all of us can. So Myra, can you, can you share? Lucky. So I, I'm sorry, I've been in and out of this meeting. I had to have an infusion. So I was in there then I can't, I'm finally finished. Okay. Um, believe me I don't have it completely figured out but what I do and what I was mainly doing all through um, COVID was sending out notes and they got to be extensive because I pick up from everybody from Parkinson's Foundation I have a zoom from what they have what other things other people have any new information I put it in there and I send it out once once a week and it's it's great. I mean, I used to try to do it through, I, I'm i on uh, Comcast. Well, they kept bumping me off and it was awful. So mm -hmm. fortunately, someone from the Alliance was able to help me figure out how to do it. it believe me, it's not beautiful. It will not win awards, but everybody is really <laughs> But everybody the, gets the information. Right, right. <laughs> Cover the basics. And it's, and it's free, but I need to, what's the site? Uh, where did she get information on YouTube on it? Just look up MailChimp. Um, yeah, I, I think that if you're on YouTube and you just type in uh, MailChimp tutorial or okay, that's just a, basics that's, of MailChimp or something like that. Mm -hmm. but it, it, I actually, because I had to drop off of tutorials a couple years ago through the company, they sent me an email with the link to all their tutorials sequentially. Mm. So I can send that to you, oh, please. Or any, I mean, how do you want me to handle that? I, I'm pretty sure I still got it in my computer, um, and it's just one after another. I don't think you have to have signed up, and mm. I'm. I bet you you could probably find them in YouTube. They've got to probably be there, but yeah. there are probably seven or eight tutorials that take wow. you That's through great. the different steps. So okay. you want That's me to great. send that to one of you at PMDA? Yeah, if you send it to me, I send okay. out a follow up um, after each roundtable, and so I can include that as one of the resources, depending on how it's formatted. I can yeah. try, to, try to you know include that. Um, 
I think they gave me a link and then that link had all of them listed. So I'll play around with it. I have a question and I've been meaning to ask this. What does PMDA use? Hmm. Well, your database. Good question. Um, our, our team has grown. We have, uh, or Kelly, you unmuted. Maybe you know. <laughs> uh, for the, yeah, for the email provider lists, like a, a MailChimp type of alternative, we're using Campaign Monitor, which I had never actually heard of until coming here. Um, at the past organization I was at, we had used MailChimp as well. And I think maybe at some point, we had here at PMD Alliance used MailChimp, but right now it's Campaign Monitor. Okay, right, right. And Rachel and I each have the idea to um, bring on our marketing person, uh, Phil, who's on our team, and potentially maybe we could offer a, um, a MailChimp or a 101 or something. 101, yeah, for the NC network. Um, maybe in place of one of the roundtables or in addition to. So, um, you know, it seems like this is coming up a lot. And so uh, maybe we are all ready to <laughs> <laughs> know a little bit more. And so we can be a little more um, sophisticated in the way that we send our, our information out to our group members. So, And um, let me ask a question for people who are familiar with MailChimp. Is MailChimp um, a place where then you would be able to keep all of the information for those people like is that that one central location where you've got names email addresses phone numbers uh even maybe physical addresses of these people and that is the holder of that information you create audiences that's okay. what they call them and you can have and lauren lauren jump in here because i i, I was just playing with it i haven't actually run it yet um, but you can have subcat, you know, subcategories. Oh, wow. Like, so you can have like a care partner. Yeah. Right. Group. So we've got wow, nine, okay. eight, nine groups that will be functioning some with their own leaders that I have nothing to do with. That's up to them. If we decide to go with MailChimp to go ahead and load their information in. And then if we wanted to do a nonprofit wide email, we would grab all those, Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong. Wouldn't we grab all those audiences and pull them into one? Yeah, so you have your your general group and you can tag them. So you might have mm. uh, support group leaders or uh, like medical providers or care partners, whatever the case may be, you tag them. If I want to send something out just to the care partners, I can just grab that tag and it'll go just to them. Um, and you can export all your contacts as a, um, what is it, ESV file, I think, an Excel file. Mm -hmm. um, import contacts. Um, it'll keep all the information for you. That's wonderful. Um, thanks it's for very that. Versatile. Very versatile. Yeah, it sounds like it. And and a, maybe does does what does one person maintain that? And do do would some of the leaders then have access to it so that they could send out their own information to subgroups, or is it up to one person to maintain it and send out that information to subgroups? Question. I don't know how you would do multiple users on it because I'm the only one that does our newsletter, yeah. so I'm not positive. Okay. Um, we would definitely need to have more than one user because, I, as I said, we've got groups that I am right. not directly involved with. It may have to do, there is a pricing plan too, as your numbers increase. Mm. And a lot of the MailChimp's focus is on marketing, getting customers. Right. So it's not specifically designed yeah. for Right, people like us who are running support groups, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to sell anything, you know, or get or, more customers right, to come exactly. to my, you know, site. Um, and we had looked at initially the the least expensive, and then you know, right before the pandemic, we were looking at the, you know, the the lowest paid paid program. But again, I, you have just listening to everybody today has encouraged me to go back to our group and say, okay. <laughs> We're, we're done, you know, playing around. We need to make a decision mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I just, to me, that's really, really important that we, we choose something and, and at least try it. And Lauren had been my sort of go-to person mm -hmm. uh, in terms of convincing our one outlier that, yeah, MailChimp's probably what we want to go with. So anyway. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing that up. Mm. Uh, we're taking that note and we will uh, look into providing some kind of training, basic training on that in the future. Thank you. Um, let's move on, please, to second room. Uh, Ana Maria, uh, Jay, Lauren, Charlene, and um, 
Kali at CASA. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, who would like to speak for second group? Anything come up? Interesting discussions, suggestions for the larger group? Anna Maria, you always volunteer. No, <laughs> not today. Not today. <laughs> I'll do it. I always wait for someone. <laughs> yes. Um, we had a really good discussion. Um, very diverse group that we had. We talked a little bit about our agenda and you know, what are typical things that we might have on the agenda every month. Like in my group, we have our tips and trips, tips and tricks segment. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, what are the, the different things that we do um, just tossed around some different ideas, like maybe highlighting one person a month okay. that gets up and talks for a little bit just to, because we all know people post-diagnosis, mm -hmm. but we don't know what they did pre-diagnosis or, you know, they might talk about their hobbies or what their career was, things like that. So that. Uh, you know, plugging that into the agenda. Um, we talked about the importance of social time. I think we're all finding that um, not just, you know, having the, the, structured group but having social time is really really important and we're finding that a lot of really good discussions get happening during that social time whether it be time during the meeting like someone they the first 30 minutes and the last 30 minutes are actually just social time and then they have time in between that they might have a speaker or something mm -hmm. um what else do we talk about we talked a little bit about how to publicize your group to get new members Okay. Um, Anna Maria, what am I missing? <laughs> Anything to add? I don't see you on my screen. No? Matt, we talked about activities and types of games that okay. we can play. Great. Fun. Keeping things fresh. And yeah. active. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Inspiring joy. <laughs> and play that's good yeah and that social time is so important you know whether it's opening the room up a half hour before the meeting starts um, or holding space for people after the meeting is officially over for that um, that's very helpful great i see your your chat mary and we'll deal with that oh anna maria's unmuted now just just a little tiny thing hello yes. it just uh i I think that uh, you know people run their groups uh, uh, with with uh, with similarities, mm -hmm. with similarities, trying to put the agenda forward and planning. I think planning is very important, and I think that that's 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 a cultural approach, you know, planning. But I I I wanted to to say uh, to add that how do we uh, approach planning in a short cycle rhythm because as we face COVID, another thing may happen in the future. So how do we see planning as a short cycle too? Maybe, for example, in my group, uh, we have only six months as coordinators because people, some people are in their in their in their uh, with their Parkinson for a long time so mm -hmm. six months it's it's okay no longer as a as a support leader group mm -hmm. so a uh, planning it's very important but as a difference I would say short cycle planning it's it's different I think it's a challenge it's 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 uh, it's a it's a difference I see it's mm -hmm. a difference I see but um it's one thing that I it's similar for everybody including myself, is that we people, we are wired for social bonding. So mm. social social space in the meetings is so important because we are wired for social. And we have to struggle against apathy and we have to understand that. No, mm -hmm. because we as caregivers or sponsors or partners, we also are impacted and we also may have you know, in a bad mood sometimes when we are running a group. So it's okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 
Definitely. Lots of good points in there, Anna Maria. Thank you for that. Um, and the short cycle planning. Yes, we never know what's around the bend, do we? Things things change um, on a daily basis. And so thinking, you know, maybe I asked the question as we started today, you know, your year, you know, what what goal do you have for your year? Well, maybe what what's your goal next month? You know, like let's keep it a little, little bit more contained. And so it's not always thinking way out. Um but many, many good things in there. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move forward because we are running short on time. Um, so uh, the third room had Dave, Jan, John, and Nancy. If there was anything we wanted to add. I'll take a stab at starting. Nancy, you can jump in if you want. Um, yes, Dave. Nancy talked about uh, the various groups she's got going in San Diego, which is very, very impressive. Um, we we got, kind of got talking about um the support group the mailing list like we were ta just talking about mm -hmm. we were talking about cleaning up the mailing list um people we all seem to put the the disclaimer or the little note at the bottom if you no longer wish to be mail uh, included on this mail list please let us know in an attempt to clean up the list um Judy talked about the Apple Watch and uh, the app called Strive PD, which is apparently very promising in, in, um, in um, detecting your motion in Parkinson's when you fall and so forth. Mm. Um, Kathy talked about, which is very interesting. She, her, she's a rock steady coach. And she talked about, um, she's got two locations. And in one location in particular, she's got five classes a week, five, five different levels of classes. Wow. So she might have all five classes in one day, three days a week. And uh, that, that was very impressive. That was very interesting to listen to she, how she um, splits them into levels based on ability. Mm -hmm. And um, she has she even has nighttime classes for people who still work. Mm -hmm. And that was really interesting. We talked about um, how those services, one day a week, she um, dedicates a half hour to a support group. At the end of that, at the end of the rock steady boxing session, which is a very convenient since the people are already there. Already there. Mm. And we talked about how rock steady serves as um as a support group. Um, talked about um the briefly about registries and states. Um, Mar, I think it was, I forget who it was, and Margie, Marge, right up. I was just trying to start a registry in Delaware. And um, Nancy talked about the one in California that we have. Uh, Nancy, you want to chime in there? You did an excellent job. I don't think I could compete <laughs> with that, Dave. Um, Great notes. <laughs> Judy, Judy was part of our group and had to leave. And she commented that they often use news as a vehicle for, for what they might talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the the Strive PD came up with the Apple 8 watch that's coming out, um, which, you know, not only assesses movement, but blood pressure, uh, temp body temperature. And I'd actually been looking for a speaker. So that was really helpful for her. It's tied with Medtronics. So you probably, mm -hmm. everybody's probably got a Medtronics rep in there, somewhere <laughs> in there, in their state or area, but that's who she used. Um, uh, a Facebook page. One group's got a Facebook page for the care partners, mm -hmm. which um, that's one way, way they share ideas. Um, so that's, I think, Dave, you, you, really, you really covered it really, Nailed really it. well um, <laughs> in terms of what, what, we, what we were looking at. That's great. As Thank I mentioned, you John told us about it down in Myrtle Beach where they had, mm -hmm. they were just kind of strung out in a long um, straight line type of setup. They, had um the North Myrtle Beach group and the South Myrtle Beach group and the Central Myrtle Beach group and now they they uh, he's kind of combining them into one mm. and the problems associated with travel for that 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 brings up. I see. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot of discussion in that group. Yeah, Thanks it's a good group. The, yeah, the rundown there. I think it's a good point to bring up that Facebook group idea um, that you can create a private. Facebook group for those people that they can then share information, ideas, vent, tips, tricks, all sorts of things throughout those days that you're not meeting. 
so that you are staying connected with them and you're able to sort of continue the conversation when you come back in person and are able to then bring it back online. And I think that's a nice idea. Yeah, the consistency there. Nancy, mm -hmm. Nancy. one, well, I saw in the chat, somebody asking about resources for care partners. Yes. Um, one thing that I would like to share just from personal experience, I've attended some um, independent care partner trainings and two that I highly recommend, one is out of UC San Francisco, the Mercy um, Center, Judy Long, who's a chaplain, whose husband has uh, Alzheimer's, runs, a, runs four groups. Two of them are care partner of someone with a serious illness or care partner for somebody with a neurological disorder. That second one won't be offered until the spring. It's a... Oh, it goes for at least four weeks, maybe eight, don't quote me. And then once you're done with it, you can join a monthly group. Talk about specific techniques. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I, I took it. Um, it was most helpful for me. And then uh, out of uh, San Francisco, again, the Zen Project um, has a whole caregiving series as well um, for care partners. Uh, in terms okay. of specific techniques for you in turn in, within your role as a care partner. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. I'll um, try and send when I send that other link, I'll see if I can't send something that would give enough information that you can share for people to great find their way. Okay. I'll attach it as well. Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Um, we are a little bit over time already, so we've got two more groups to go. And if you're game, we, we can go ahead and, and um, have these last two groups share quickly. Um, so uh, the fourth group uh, has Freddie, Jen, Joe, John, Kai, Myra, and then um, someone with iPhone as your name. <laughs> I see you there and smiling. What's your name? Linda. Linda. Thank you, yeah. Linda. Anyone want to share? From group four. I'll Since just say that we learned that Linda has a terrific organization. It's it's <laughs> really quite something. It really is, Linda. I mean, I, she's got a website up that looks very Thank professional you. and everything. It's really, really something. Wonderful. Thank you. Did you want to tell us a little bit about it, Linda? Oh, we had someone that was uh, because I'm from a rural community. Uh, and we don't have a very big population, <laughs> like six, 7,000. <laughs> we, uh, some of them are college students, but we formed a website. We had someone help us to do that to where it shows, uh, you know, kind of what we do um, and what we have organized uh, pictures that, you know, it does show pictures of, of things that we do at our meetings. Uh, so it's it's called Moving to Live uh, of Northwest Kansas Parkinson Northwest Kansas Parkinson families, um, and we've done that to reach out to people. Uh, so it's been it's been really good. We cover a nine county area, and trying to get some zooming going on this next year. Uh, so it's been, we do have Facebook also, uh, but uh, I don't know, it's just, it's been good. We've brought in people and from different counties and uh, to be helpful to them. And uh, we've found, yeah. And, and we use our community as far as, as art is concerned, uh, music is concerned. We have people in our community that do that art to help with people with Parkinson's because we meet one day a week and that'll start up in September. We do grant, we, we did apply for a grant and got that grant to help us continue. Uh, in the morning, we start out at 10 o'clock and do uh, exercise movements. We have somebody that does that mm -hmm. for 30 minutes, the crossover to help with people with Parkinson's. Then we have a social time for 30 minutes where we have coffee and snacks. We can talk about things. Uh, then we go on to having somebody come in every Wednesday, whether it's art, music. We found out music is very, very helpful mm -hmm. with those with Parkinson's. 
um, we've had, we've got someone that will come in for uh, CPR training. Uh, I do every fifth Wednesday, I do a caregiver support group. I talk with the caregivers to kind of help them uh, because I never had that mm. to help them with um, taking care of their partner or their loved one or their spouse. Uh, so that's been a, a real challenge for me being as I recently lost my husband a year and a half ago with Parkinson's. So uh, that's been a real challenge for me, <laughs> but I never had that. So I want to be able to be helpful also, Wow! but we do have a Incredible. website. And so, well, thank you for what you're doing um, and yes. uh, giving so much of yourself and your heart um, at this point. Yeah, that and was, I'm first time in this group of groups and, uh, it's amazing the work you do, and I thank you for it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're we're yeah. attempting to just continue to increase our membership, you know, mm -hmm. load because we I don't know we have quite a few that from different areas in that nine county. So if we zoom in a couple of counties, we'll be able to catch some of them because the distance is so far for them sure. to travel. Right, right, and that and we are we are going to start up. Uh, rock steady boxing which is uh, supposed to be very helpful and I know that's what they told my husband when he had Parkinson's that boxing would be a good uh, exercise move so absolutely well um, I can't believe all the things you're doing um, and in <laughs> the challenge of uh, your area and how uh, everyone's spread out and it actually um, ties closely to a new um, mission that we have um, at PMD Alliance. It's uh, called Rural Reach. Yes. And yes. So I, I don't know if I think Kelly um, on our call today, she was involved with our first uh, live stream about the Rural Reach uh, program. And so I don't know if you want to say anything, Kelly, or if you know if anything else is coming up that might be helpful for Linda and other people living in more rural areas and trying to um, reach more folks, especially who might not have access uh, as easily um, as in other areas, more urban or more, um, yes, well-equipped, you know, full of resources. Parkinson's areas. resources, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll drop the link to yesterday's uh, Rural Reach panel discussion in the chat here. It was a really great discussion. There was uh, four panelists and yeah I, I think it would be a really interesting um replay to watch back so I'll drop the link here thanks Kelly thank you, Kelly. Thank you. and okay. I found Linda's website and I also posted that in the chat for people who want to just take a thank peek you. at the uh <laughs> wonderful website that Linda has <laughs> thank you thank you Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Rachel. We have one more group to hear from uh Angela, Diane, Dawn, Rick, and Roger. Who would like to speak on behalf of uh, group number five? Oh, Diane, I think if you are speaking, you are muted still, so you've got to <laughs> unmute. Good catch, Rachel. That's the best way to hear me. <laughs> I'm muted. Uh, one, of the there we go. one of the things we discussed was uh, some people really down because of Parkinson's. And I said, I took a life theme off of a fortune cookie that I just got. And I'm gonna to try to remember it. <laughs> do not do not let what can, you cannot do interfere with what you can do. So many of us think about what we used to do and don't think about what we can do today. And today's here, today's what we need to act on, not what we used to do. Right. Live fully right now in the present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was great. Wisdom, Dawn. Yeah. Yes. And then Diane. And Diane. Yeah. Okay. We also talked about falling and um, and we had some ideas from Roger about practicing how to fall mm -hmm. um, so that when you do fall, you're safe. So that was interesting there. And then um, hospice is another place for uh, advertising, I guess. And mm -hmm. I like that Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about what we, what do we do before we get hospice in and, you know, and how 
we have to be our own advocate for our own families. Yep. Basically, that's it. Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. uh, Roger, I saw that you unmuted. Did you want to contribute? I just want to thank Diane. My mother was just on a hospice. And I started out thinking they were the expert, but no one can know it all. You still have to have to be a prime advocate for the little things. So I suggested that she gave a lot of little tips. What is the one tip that you wish you would have known before hospice? And I just got back from a stroke camp, which was wonderful. You will be hearing more about that. But there's a, a wonderful caregiver booklet, 50 Tips for Caregivers. And 90% of stroke camp could be used for Parkinson's. Oh, wow. I I would, I'd love send, to hear more about that, Roger. Yeah. I'll be sending you a copy of the little 50 tip. Oh, oh great. Mm, good. Is that something I could get soon and then I could include it potentially in the follow-up email? Bingo. Okay. Bingo. Great. All right. <laughs> Finally gave you my bio and picture. I apologize. <laughs> no worries. We got that, Roger. We got it. Um, thank you. You are at stroke camp. All right. <laughs> You're busy. You are busy. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we are already uh, 12 minutes over. So thank you all for staying on. Um, that shows how um, you know, dedicated you are and you want to learn and um, hear from others. So thank you for that. Um, we will be in touch about next month. Um, we don't have solid dates yet. We're, well, we were thinking September 12th might be uh, an in sync online program for us. So just pencil it in your calendar and we'll have more details to come uh, in the emails uh, in our marketing. And other than that, anything I'm forgetting, Kelly and Rachel, before we say goodbye? Great session. Yeah, good good I'm glad you think Great so. Great information. And yeah. we will look into doing some sort of round table with uh, MailChimp or you know creating lists like that. I mm -hmm. think that would be very helpful for small and large groups, so. Thank you, this is great. Perfect. Thank you. Shannon, Thank did, you. You forget, did you forget about how to send me the hints and tips from for care partner presentation? Oh, Mary, I saw your um, your chat. And then uh, Nancy, um, she she gave you a couple of, um, gave us a couple of recommendations for, for where she has received tips. Okay. And then it sounds like, uh, Roger's Roger. going to send something. Yeah, he's going to send something from his stroke camp that is very applicable. It sounds like to um, okay. you know any care partner uh, with with health con health conditions. So, um, is that what you were looking for, Mary? Yeah, we were going to have somebody come in and talk from accessible systems, like you know the chair lifts and that. But what we're looking for is things that care partners have discovered that are like the the tooth, the um, tennis ball on a toothbrush, simple home hints that don't require people going out to buy things that they can mm. adapt themselves to help with the care partner I see. Uh, journey, um, you know, or things under to keep uh, plates from going off, but not buying things from accessible systems or, mm. or some medical place where you can come up where people have tried things transfer boards or something. Mm. And we were going to ask care partners to share those, but I didn't know if there was a list of where I could get some mm. of those homemade tips or not. I'm not aware of any lists that, that uh, exist out there. I'm not sure if anyone here on the call who's remaining knows of anything. It seems like most care partners care partner groups when they meet they they discuss with one another what each of them does and then we can get ideas that way but as far as like a central yeah list I have not come across um but that's something 
that and maybe potentially another round table, we could focus on the care partner group needs and um, maybe source, you know, uh, crowdsource from people and then come up with a list. Uh, so so that's that's another great idea, Mary. I think it would be handy and maybe it would be even something that we could put into a booklet form to, you know, uh, give out to our care partner groups. Sure, sure. Great idea. Um, let's continue to, to be creative like this. Um, Just creative, yeah. <laughs> simple creative things, you know, yeah. that, make, that might make life a little bit easier. Absolutely. Exactly. Thank you, Mary. And thank yeah, you, thank everyone. You. Um, we will see you thank next you. time. Have a great uh, weekend. <laughs> yeah. See you soon. Thank you, guys. Bye. Good to see you again, Rick. <laughs>